one and you think you can get it you know, um, picked up by Apple's uh, marketing uh, machine, then you know, you, you'd probably want to take your web app and wrap it in a, in a shell, something like PhoneGap or NimbleKit, uh, and deploy it on the App Store. But you know, it's all less of an issue than, than you might think. Um, particularly, I mean, for, for, for businesses, and we've heard this again and again, it's kind of a no-brainer to go mobile web. Um, for performance-intensive consumer apps, it's uh, a little bit more of a challenge, uh, more of a question of like, well, do we want the cross-browser, cross-platform reach, and the ease of updating, and the lack of the Apple Store you know, kind of policy stuff, or do we want to um, uh, have the absolute you know, highest performance we, we want? So a couple things, uh, progressive enhancement. So uh, progressive enhancement is a, a popular method of saying, well, you should start with an HTML page and then add behavior to it. Um, and that's how you get from a document to an app. Um, so it's kind of like taking a piece of paper and folding it up and saying, now it's a plane. Well, it's, it's not really a plane. It's a paper plane. Um, and that's one of the problems that you often get with the progressive enhancement approach. And the progressive enhancement approach is basically saying that you know, start with HTML and then add JavaScript and CSS to add interactions to it. And that works if you're really starting with a, a document that you want to make easier, you know, more easily navigable, et cetera. But if it's really an application, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And we say it's a, kind of the difference uh, between Mr. Incredible and, uh, oh God, I forget the name of the guy. Buddy, yeah. You know, he's, he's progressively enhanced. He's actually a normal person with technology that makes him better, but Mr. Incredible is just incredible. <laughs> so what's the state of the art uh, on, uh, for mobile HTML5? Um, and we'll cover um, the environment. So today, you can expect that um, you have BlackBerry, Android, Microsoft, or Nokesoft as we call it, um, the future IE9 mobile for Nokia phones. Um, iOS um, and Palm are the HTML5 um, browsers. The vast majority of the, the market is on WebKit. Um, so Apple, uh, which is you know, the layout engine that was originally built by uh, the Conqueror team in the late 90s and then taken over by the Safari team uh, building their first uh, browser. By the way, does anyone know when, when Safari 1 came out? Who thinks it was 2006, 2005, 2004, 2003, 2002, 2001? Okay, 2003. I could have gone, but then, you know. Sorry, I don't know. But so really, most of the... Um, most of the browsers you're looking at um, for kind of rich, rich uh, web apps are running WebKit. Um, when Nokia shifts to i9 mobile, I think that's will be the other one that you'll really care about. That's Android. So this is mobile. So Android, the Android browser is based on WebKit. Um, now they're they've in Honeycomb. So Android three, they've moved to integrate more of the Chrome, Chromium core into it, but it's still definitely not Chrome 10 running on Honeycomb. It's, uh, it's definitely a different branch. And this is the support uh, for Edge browsers. And I just compared the, the desktop side. Uh, now IE 10 preview release is the Edge browser for IE. Uh, I guess it got launched today. Um, and mobile. Uh, so iOS 4.3.1, which is the latest version of iOS. Playbook, uh, Honeycomb. Playbook actually has the best support of HTML5 of um, anyone except Chrome 10. Uh, they've done a, a really, really nice job of adding um, a lot of, built, built, taking a very recent WebKit build and adding an awful lot of enhancements in it to make it um, great. And it performs fantastically as well. So very happy with uh, the Playbook. Uh, Honeycomb is pretty much green all over as well. It doesn't support just a couple things. Um, web sockets, uh, workers, and history management is not working in Honeycomb. Um, iOS 4.3, inline SVG isn't working. 
meaning that you can get SVG to work in line, but you have to declare your whole page as an XHTML document. Um, and then they've turned off uh, web workers and web sockets uh, for now. But pretty much all, the, you know, high level, all the features are pretty much there um, in the Edge browsers. Now the next level down from this, so you need to take a look at exactly which part of these features are working. Because uh, Smell, which is the declarative animation for SVG, um, is there, but it only animates uh, a percentage of SVG attributes depending on what browser you're in. So uh, you want to take a look at a couple of things. Uh, can I use .com, uh, which has a pretty good summary of uh, which browsers support what at a fairly granular level. Modernizer is sort of the first thing. Um, it's very high level. Yep, the browser says it supports X. Um, sometimes the browser doesn't actually support X or supports 50% of X. Um, Device Atlas, which is a, a mobile uh, feature capability. And then actually, Wikipedia is actually pretty good. Um, so Wikipedia has comparison of layout engines for CSS3 and HTML5 that goes into an awful lot of detail. So when we've got diversity, just like on the desktop, we have abstractions. Um, so just like you don't want to worry about the box model on IE versus Chrome, and you use jQuery or use XJS on the desktop, this is the crop of abstractions that have uh, come into play for mobile web. And uh, you know, we at Sentia make Sentia Touch. We also sponsor JQ Touch, uh, which was um, written by one of our guys. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about jQuery. Um, and then Sprout Core, you know, we'll have something at some point that works on tablets. And then there's a bunch of smaller little abstractions that do, um, and aim to do less or solve a, a slightly uh, smaller problem. So why would you use a framework? Why would you use these abstractions? Um, one is that it provides user interface components. Um, you know, we had to rewrite our Android scroller nine times uh, to make it high performance and to make it work correctly with the, all the other components we were using. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to use someone who solved that already. <laughs> um, it smooths out browser consistencies quite a bit. Um, it also helps you package up, um, if you're not a designer, package up pre-built themes uh, and color schemes and you know drop shadows and insets, etc. Uh, in a way that mimic either native or server paradigms. And then a consistent application architecture, so an ability to take model view controllers or wh what have you and just reuse it fairly easily. There's sort of two um, dialects, really, of uh, these frameworks. There's the um, progressive enhancement document-focused um, approach, which is the JQ Touch and the jQuery mobile approach, which is um, start with an HTML5 document, mark it up with some JavaScript and CSS until it looks like an application. And then there's the, the programmatic approach, a uh, thick line approach with, um, with Sentry Touch, which is you're going to create everything from JavaScript, you're going to manage everything from JavaScript, you're going to have a JavaScript event model. Um, if you like JavaScript and you like having uh, you know, component design and you like playing with object-oriented frameworks, you're going to like that. Um, so it's kind of strokes for folks. JQ Touch uh, is a UI layer on top of jQuery. Um, it is declarative HTML. It basically adds a bunch of CSS classes to your content and duplicates things like um, uh, separate uh, transitions between different cards, um, lists, disclosure icons, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. It works on iOS today, Android mostly, BlackBerry 6, uh, and it's designed really to leverage a lot of the WebKit-based effects. And these are some JQ Touch um, applications. It was probably the most popular early library by far. And here's what the, the actual source for it looks like, which is you add in the jQuery CSS, you add CSS classes for semantics and configs, and you get things like what looks on, on the right-hand side, which is nice styled divs uh, with disclosure icons that you can attach different transitions and effects to jQuery mobile. Uh, it's in alpha right now. Also a UI layer on top of jQuery. Also declarative HTML, uh, progressive enhancement approach. Um, 
basically uh, iOS, Android, BlackBerry V5, a couple of the, the other secondary browsers as well. Um, these are the types of applications that uh, it produces, um, kind of page-oriented um, experiences. These are the, this is the type of source that you see, which is, it looks like HTML5. Uh, it uses the data star from HTML5 um, to add uh, behavior. But basically produces the same kind of uh, experience, which is a nicely styled web page uh, that uh, you can interact with. Uh, Since you touch is, um, is our self-contained library. Uh, it's programmatic JavaScript. Um, it allows you to create full kind of MVC applications. So if you've worked with um, ob you know, object-oriented frameworks of any kind, it'll, it'll look familiar to you. Um, it today supports iOS, Android, BlackBerry v6. Works on Bata and Migo, uh, if Migo ever ships uh, from Intel. Um, and it will work on Windows uh, Phone 7 and uh, the Noxsoft IE9 mobile uh, when that ships. And the type of experience you get is, um, is more app-like. Um, so we can, because we have full control of uh, JavaScript or of the DOM, uh, because you're creating from scratch, uh, you can duplicate a lot more native behaviors like more bounce physics and more scrolling, uh, and more effects. This is the source. Um, instead of declaring UI elements in markup, you declare it basically in JSON structures. So it depends on whether you like angle braces or you like curly braces. It's essentially the same, really the same structure. So you know, what's what do we consider to be in a good good HTML5 framework? Well, um, basically, to should be everything you need to save yourself time, <laughs> uh, which is uh, a layout system. So you can have things that lay out differently on um, an iPhone or an iPad, or you know, change uh, according to the viewport size, uh, themings, icons, orientation, and scrolling. Um, these are all things that are really pretty critical, um, including you know, proper MVC framework. Uh, to properly organize large applications and have teams working on applications rather than uh, single developers. There's a pretty well characterized set of basic user interface components that people expect on mobile today um, that are, it's kind of convergent evolution, which is if you've got a screen that's this size and you've got this to interact with, uh, you sort of end up with similar user interface components at the end. It's kind of like uh, saber-toothed tigers, you know, in the Ice Age, uh, they've, you know, convergent evolution, they've evolved five separate times and five separate Ice Ages because you need longer teeth to kill the thicker-skinned animals during an Ice Age. Um, so you kind of get convergent evolution in UI uh, paradigms as well. So lists, carousels, pickers, overlays, scrollers, these are all things that um, people gravitate to when they're trying to create usable um, gestural interfaces on small form factors. Theming system, so you can swap out colors throughout your entire application and shapes, etc. just using a couple of um, lines of code. So this is just three separate themes with the same content. Um, and we use something called um, SAS, which is fantastic, technically awesome style sheets. Um, you can also, there, there, there's another framework, our uh, CSS framework called Less, that's also popular as well. We, we went uh, one way, other people are using um, others. Form elements, including you know, cross-platform um, widgets that look the same no matter what platform you're on, but can be styled. Scrolling, um, I think scrolling is probably the first thing that uh, most web developers try and address when they're building uh, a web application from scratch on mobile, and it's the first thing that they hit their head against, which is uh, independently scrollable areas are not straightforward to build on mobile because there's no position fixed, because the notion of what a viewport is um, on mobile is very different uh, than what it is on desktop. On desktop, your window size and your viewport are the same. Uh, they're not the same on mobile, so you can't actually position things um, in a fixed manner, it's just not there. Uh, Apple took it out. And that's because of pinch zoom. You, otherwise you get very odd effects when you zoom in and zoom out of pages because your viewport is changing even though your document window is not changing. Uh, touch events, you don't get really 
very good abstractions from the raw browser. Where you basically get, yeah, the touch started, the touch